Hey guys, MasterCoex here. Now I've moved from my usual setting to what is quickly becoming the story time chair because we're not going to do a discussion video today. We're going to do something that's a little bit more off the cuff. Today is a story time with Masako, and the story is all about this little guy and how much of an impact he made on my life. More specifically, it's about how Dragon Ball Z was introduced to the United Kingdom, as far as I remember. I actually did a video about this maybe two or three years ago on this very channel. You can find it if you like, I'll include an annotation on the top right, but it's basically going to talk about what I'm going to talk about here. This is how Dragon Ball Z appeared in my frame of mind when I was just ooh, 13. But I want to give a little bit of context here about how I discovered anime in the first place. So we're about to dive into my history and how I discovered anime in general. Put simply, it was down to my brother. My brother is about maybe five and a half years older than me and he is a lot taller than I am. And I'm tall, I'm about like four, six foot three. Any of you who've met me in person will agree that I am pretty tall. And my brother, he's like six foot seven. But anyway, he was quite intimidating and we didn't really get on much in our childhood. But the one thing that we did connect with was anime and very adult anime too. We're not talking about hentai, but stuff like Project Aiko, Dominion Tank Police, 3 by 3 Eyes, even Legend of the Overfiend. But I used to borrow his VHS tapes and watch these anime, even though he might not have known about that at the time. But yeah, I totally did. I was 10 years old and I was watching stuff that was 15 rated. <gasps> oh, shock horror, Masako, you naughty boy. So in terms of exposure to anime, I was starting to get that from maybe the age of 10 or 11. Then I discovered Sailor Moon. And being an awkward teenager at the time, I had mixed feelings about what this was. And I felt very strange. It was the first inklings about being attracted to the opposite sex. You know that time before you think, ooh, girls have cooties, but actually I kind of like girls. My dad used to tease me all the time about it. And so whenever I watched anime him, he'd walk through the room and he would just basically tease me and just go, ooh, is that all the girlies and stuff? And that just made me feel really uncomfortable. And as a result, I always shied away by talking about anime in front of my parents and even my brother later on, because as he was getting older, anime was kind of getting a bit samey. He kind of drifted out of that. And I thought, nah, man, I'm gonna be with anime forever. Anime is great. I was a total weeb as a kid, but now even I'm just thinking, okay, yeah, not all of the anime is that good. I'm starting to see what he was thinking being the age of 30. Up until then, Fox Kids in the UK was where I got my anime. But in 2000, Cartoon Network really started to push the cool factor as they introduced Toonami. Yes, we did have Toonami for a while. As far as I was aware, Toonami was just the vehicle for all the boy oriented cartoon shows. And one particular one that was going to Cartoon Network very soon, March the 6th, 2000, Dragon Ball Z. And the marketing campaign that they did for that was mind blowing, at least at the time. You might think it's a little tame by today's standards, but at the time, I was blown away. And thanks to the YouTube channel, Dragon Ball UK versions and Gogeta AF on Facebook, I can show you what it was like to watch a Dragon Ball TV commercial in the UK in 2000. Have a look. In 1984, I became the World Karate Champion for the first time, beating the American Joe Fisher in the final. Near the end of the fight, he tried to surprise me with a kick to my chest, but I anticipated and knocked him to the ground. Last week, I saw Dragon Ball Z. I never knew what hit me. Dragon Ball Z, the brand new show, starts March the 6th in one hour specials only on Cartoon Network. You'll never know what hit you. This September on Cartoon Network, take a journey to a world where chaos reigns. The brand new saga of Dragon Ball Z. And the Bat is Bat, the brand new series, Batman of the Future. The next generation has arrived. Are you with us? All new episodes of Dragon Ball Z and Batman of the Future, only on Cartoon Network, the best place for toon action. Just when you thought the universe was safe, Earth is threatened by an unknown force. Grid it, can feel it. Go on. 
you can feel it. Even King Kai can sense it, and it's making our hero's blood boil. Don't miss Freezer's Counter-Attack, the first episode of the Trunk Saga on Dragon Ball Z. Starts Monday at 5 p.m. on the best place for two sagas, Cartoon Network. Brand new Dragon Ball Z, coming soon, only on Cartoon Network's Toonami. So as you can see, they were really pushing the action aspect of Dragon Ball, and it worked. As March the 6th was approaching, I was getting so excited to see this. I had no idea who the characters were, but it got me hooked. But I'm hearing what you're thinking. If you're in America, you're wondering what dub we got. Did we get the Funimation dub? Well, no, not initially. We got the Ocean dub. We got the likes of Ian Corlett and Brian Drummond and Scott McNeil in our ear holes, and it was glorious. I must admit that the Ocean dub at the time not being aware of anime censorship was really pretty good. Being innocent to all the changes and localization that they made, I enjoyed it. And fortunately, since Dragon Ball Z came in 2000 in the UK, we didn't have to wait in that Ginyu arc period, you know, the whole episode 53 looping back and forth thing that you in America had to do. We didn't have to worry about that. We jumped straight from episode 53 onwards, and that's when we got the Funimation dub. I didn't notice that much when I was a kid, but going back to that sudden jump from episode 53 to 54, that was kind of jarring. And surprisingly refreshing to hear Chris Sabat and Sean Schemmel be greenhorns relatively, and how they were trying to find their feet with the characters. Really illuminating when I think about it. And over time, I would just think about Dragon Ball Z all the time. And Cartoon Network UK's marketing campaign towards the show was fantastic. They really played on the action and made some relatively thematic commercials about the show. One commercial that really sticks out in my mind was their promotion for the Cell Saga. And I do have a clip of that and I will show you so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. So yeah, they really made an effort with this. They had one guy going around London shouting through a megaphone, HE IS COMING! Now that's commitment. So as I was developing, I watched AMV after AMV on dial-up internet as you did in 2000. But then luckily when we got broadband that same year, I was able to kind of get a good idea about what else there was of Dragon Ball. From there, I discovered GT. I discovered the original Dragon Ball. I discovered all the fan comics and all the portals and stuff like Daizenshu EX where they had a cornucopia of information about the series. And back then, I wasn't really interested about the particulars. I knew the basics about the characters and the environment, and I was okay with that. I played the video games, I just ticked along really, just saying I'm an enthusiast of the show. In the UK, we had nothing like this before. Anime was something new, something different. It was very much in the dark ages. I remember I actually called in to BBC Radio 5 Live back in like 2005, 2006, and I talked about anime, and the people on that program and radio show had no idea what I was talking about. And even to this day, the BBC seems to be relatively negative towards anime and manga. Whatever particular news stories I see on that news source and the channel is mostly derogatory or patronizing. I don't know whether you've noticed that, but that's just what I see. But back to Dragon Ball. Eventually, we got Dragon Ball and GT at the same time in 2003, and this is where Toonami really started to go off the rails, and by 2006, it was gone. We didn't have Toonami anymore, and we still don't. 
In fact, when I think about it, anime on UK TV never does that well because whenever a new channel came out that was geared towards anime programming, it would usually die a death within three to six months because nobody would be watching. You can't make a channel that is geared towards anime in the UK. You have to have something else with it. I think the most successful channel that wasn't Cartoon Network was CNX. And I remember that fondly because it did Kung Fu movies, action movies, anime as well. It had a triple A block, which was action, adventure and anime. And that was the best thing to do. I acted pretty much like any other teenager did when I first saw Dragon Ball. I tried to draw stuff in the Dragon Ball Z style. I made flash animations on Newgrounds, which you can still find. I just could not get enough of it. And one story I remember, my dad walked in on me when I was watching the Cell games and he asked me, and this is what he said, why is that man in green trousers screaming? I don't know, dad. Why is that guy in green trousers screaming? <laughs> that still tickles me to this day. So that's pretty much how much of an impact Dragon Ball Z made on my life as a teenager. I'm sorry if this was rambling, but this is pretty much coming straight from my brain to your ears. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you have any questions, just feel free to leave it in the comment and we can just talk about it. I hope to have more discussions coming soon, but until then, be sure to like, share, and subscribe these videos. And until next time, guys, I hope you're well, and catch you later.